the love train. Tuesday night, a 70s night down at Buffers. Boogie the night away to the best mix of 70s music at the home of Chandy's biggest night. Good vibes, happy hour, 10 till midnight. Double shots and mixer, just 70 pence. Groove on down to Buffers for DJ Deltic's love train. Dress to impress. No trainers, no shell suits, rights of admissions reserved. Welcome to Chandwell. After 103 and a quarter hours across 82 days, I'm halfway to completing my Law Relief Hotel. In part 9 of this series, I show how I added the terrace, steps and the dingy Buffers nightclub. So let's take a look at part 9, 100 hours, half a hotel. My design had various doors and fire escapes leading out onto the terrace. I thought though that a flight of steps to the ground level would make sense if these were actually fire escapes. I wasn't sure how they would look so I decided to make them first. I snapped off a bit of blade as I needed an ultra clean cut on these narrow low relief steps. Once cut I arranged them as a little stack of 1mm card using a scale model scenery right angle jig to arrange them. With the base of the terrace in place I thought that they may look good and after a few days pondering I decided to proceed. The challenge with a low relief building is that you don't have much depth. As a result, the hotel is squashed up. This means that the terrace is only very narrow. I made it in two main layers so that I can make it look like the three large openings have been bricked up. The outer layer is covered in texture, with the texture wrapping around the openings to hide the bare card edges. This is added on top of a base layer that already has the bricks on it. I left the alleyway arch until last so that I could wrap its texture right around the full width of the wall. This facade was then stuck with PVA to the base structure and when dropped onto the model in situ I thought it was going to look exactly like I'd imagined. The ground I added last week was not 100% level so I used a couple of clamps to hold the terrace firmly in place while the glue dried. This avoided any gaps along the bottom of the wall. I painted the steps with a stone colour and then added a facade made from a couple of layers of half millimetre card with an air vent texture in a recess. I used the jig to line it all up and then used PVA to glue the steps into place on top of the terrace. I forgot to add a bit of texture on the inside step wall and this was just bare card. So I had to cut it and add it once the steps were in place. I made it oversize and then trimmed it once the glue was dry. In the last episode you saw me decide to hack a gaping hole in the bottom of the hotel. I made two walls and added a doorway into the one that will be visible from the front of the layout. I just slid these into place and now it looks like this alleyway was an intentional piece of architecture of the building. I think it was in part three of this series where I changed the design of the hotel entrance building to make it possible to include the entrance to a dodgy nightclub at the end of the terrace. The time finally came to make that entrance. I made a simple door in Inkscape that matches the doors on the hotel's station concourse entrance. I wanted it to be accessed behind a thick stone recess which I made by layering three pieces of one millimetre card. I printed a simple sign using a font that everyone seemed to use in the 1990s. And to give it some 3D solidity, I used a very simple technique. Cut it out roughly and glue it into an unused bit of paper. Repeat, it is now three layers deep. Now cut it out normally. You are left with a sturdy sign about half a millimetre thick. Use a pen to colour the edges. I'm using grey here. Grey tends to blend in with any colour and it also lends a bit of a 3D highlight to the sign too. I glued this in place on top of the entrance and simply dropped it into place with my tweezers and some PVA glue. I cut pieces of half millimetre card by trial and error and fettling to the right size for the floor of the terrace. After adding the little edges for the steps I wrapped the whole lot in scale scenes grimy concrete texture. By building the wall and floor first I made life hard for myself when it came to the buttresses. I had to construct little hook like tops so that they fit around the little parapet wall. It took quite a while to make these and get them wrapped in texture but once done I think they look great. I'm going to finish off the terrace with these scale model scenery laser cut pedestrian railings. I finished the whole thing off with downspouts made in my usual way. Colour in the edge of a Weetabix box with a black pen, cut off a thin slice and arrange on the building. Dave asked me a question about how I make the tricky capping pieces and since I was about to start a capping piece for the staircase 
I decided to record it in more detail than usual. I print the outline of the base layer onto sticky label and then stick this to Weetabix box. The rectangle is 2.3mm wide. I use a lot of light strokes to get the rectangle cut out cleanly. This leaves me with a thin strip of Weetabix packet for the base of the capping. I have a strip of texture which is just over twice the width of the base strip. I use my fine tip applicator to add a thin wavy line of normal PVA along the Weetabix packet strip. I drop this onto the back of the texture strip. It does tend to bend but you get a few seconds before the PVA grips. So, using my steel rule and my tweezers, I slide the card until it is straight. This leaves me with a strip of texture with the strip of cereal packet down the middle. To get a crisp fold when I wrap the texture around the strip, I score both edges. With my rule along the top of the card strip, I use the back of my scalpel and firmly drag it all along the back of the texture twice. I apply thin beads of glue along the inner edges of the card strip. The glue will spread out and cover what it needs to once you start folding. Starting in the middle of the strip, I tease the wrap along the edges of the strip. The paper bends and wrinkles a little, but working outwards, the bends straighten out. Once folded along the edge, keep going and wrap the paper along the underside of the strip. You don't need any extra glue here, it all sticks using the thin beads already applied. And finally, squeeze the whole thing between two rulers. This leaves me with a thin strip which is straight and 3D enough to be passable. The final task is to use a bit of PVA along the top of the wall and bend the strip into place. There will inevitably be bits where the white paper shines through. These can be removed by a quick dab of a grey pen. I hope that helps Dave. If you have any more questions, please just ask me in the comments. The real hotel in Bradford has railings along this part of the terrace and they are attached to the outer wall. This effect can be made easily, but I would never be able to make railings by hand from cereal box. So I bought a pack of scale model scenery laser cut pedestrian railings and I coloured them in using a sharpie pen. These simply cut out of their sprue and can be attached to the hotel using a couple of fine blobs of PVA glue. I used four fifths of a packet, which I bought with another item. So, sharing the postage between those two items, these railings cost £6.19, which interestingly has doubled the total cost of the hotel so far. They do look great though. I was pleased with myself for using a sharpie to colour them in, because I thought that paint might clog the tiny gaps. However, the bare card edges on the inside of the gaps do show in photographs of the railings. I made just this one day, but for now they do look great to the naked eye. This has brought me to the end of the first half of the hotel. I've been making it for 82 days and I've worked on it for 103 and a quarter hours. This part of the build used two A4 sticky labels, one sheet of half millimetre card, one sheet of photo paper, one snap off of a blade and four fifths of a packet of railings. This has taken the total cost of the build to £12.50. about to start the second half of the hotel and this is where it starts to get tricky. I have a very complex roof to make, a grand dressed stone ballroom with ornate windows and finally a dome topped hexagonal tower. I'll be starting with the ballroom and its pedestrian passage so keep an eye out for that in my next video. So until then, thank you for watching, stay safe and I'll see you next time.